from BetMGM here on the Odyssey app and WFAN in New York City on the weekends. We got our girl Trista Crick in the building. Trista, what's going on? Oh, man. I saw my man Jay Ham was here today. I was very excited because, you know, I always like to pick your brain about the draft. We talked yeah. last time about Keegan Murray. Feels like that might be in play. Can't wait to ask you about it, what your ears to the street have to say. So, well, Go ahead, Tristan. The floor is yours. What you want? What you want to know? Mr. Ham, <laughs> worst case scenario for the Kings in your mind in terms of who they end up picking. Best case scenario. Most likely scenario. So three. Mm. Okay, best case scenario is that Jaden Ivey moves up to number two. Uh, Houston can't get off of Paolo Bancaro, and Chet Holmgren falls to number four. I think so. so a different like universe. Yeah, yeah, but I, I mean, still, I think I think there's possibility that Jaden Ivey move up moves up. Um, I would say most likely is if they stay at four, uh, that you just can't pass up on Ivey, uh, and then I think worst case scenario. Um, is that they they make some rash move just to try to win now? Which again, not to not to bash Keegan Murray, but to me he's just know where it's, going. <laughs> it's just too safe. It's too safe at number four. Um, the upside, like we could argue about the upside, but I I don't see the upside at number four. If you're number seven, then I'm okay. If you're number ten, that's fine. But at number four, you got to reach for the reach for the stars, and uh, so that just makes it a little more difficult. Any possibility that there's any trades up or down? Oh yeah, I would I would almost assuredly bet that the, I mean, there's rumor that the Kings could move up to two, um, yeah. but I would say that right now, if if I'm a betting man, if I were betting myself, I would bet that the Kings either completely trade out or trade down substantially from number four, and they do not make the pick. Mm -hmm. wow. And see, that's yeah. the, that's the scenario that, unless they're getting the all-star back, I don't like. All right? Unless you give me an all-star back, I need you to make that pick on draft day, okay? Mm -hmm. We're number four. Mm -hmm. just, just do what you got to do. Tristan, I've heard rumors about Portland being involved and Portland trying to move up into the top four or five and – I mean, come on, let's let's make a deal. What can, I, I'm I'm the general manager here. What can what can you give me to entice me to move out of four and move back to seven? Well, let's talk. Let's talk. What do we? What do you even have that we want? You want four. We. What do we even have that you want? I don't know. Like yeah. You're, you're to pick up Anthony Simons, you don't want that. That with De'Aaron Fox is like very problematic, in my opinion. Nurk feels like doesn't make sense because he's with Sabonis. He's not. He's. You guys know he's pretty soft around the rim. He doesn't like to dunk. He does the whole Euro finger roll thing, coupled with Sabonis, who also does that same type of thing. Both kind of allergic to defense. On top of Deeran not being really interested in defense, I'm not sure that a trade is possible. Mm. Unless like we gave you Nasir a little, yeah, no, that's that would, and like I love Nasir a little. I, I actually wouldn't want to want to part with him for mm -hmm. those spots. If if I'm Portland, also guys, real side road thoughts on the Mike Schmitz move, and mm -hmm. my mind's like he's staying on at ESPN through the entirety of this draft. So he's also still kind of like going to be back channeling with Portland. So are we to believe that his article is going to be wrong in ter terms of who he likes like because you don't want to telegraph who portland likes right and then have the game behind the game be altered right like what are you guys immediate thoughts on that well good for him was my initial thought that's cool but like somebody else mentioned it too like because they had they had uh and then in the chat they were talking about how right now he's got keegan murray going to the kings at four and they joke, they're like, yeah, look at him working already, trying to throw throw off the scent. He really wants shade and sharp. He's trying to throw everybody off the scent in, in, in mocking uh, Keegan going to the Kings. But it's an interesting dynamic, and it makes you wonder. I mean, I guess it's not a big deal. But, like, why why do this now. before the draft? Like, why announce it before the deal could have been in place, and you could have just went on about draft season and then – announced it but why announce it three and a half weeks before the draft and to me it also says well then what does that actually that what does that actually mean does that mean that portland's gonna fully more rebuild and retool if you've got a draft analyst did you do you feel like basically our guy joe cronin who i love i've known him since he was just the the main capologist for portland like 
Are you saying that his main job is just the cap and figuring that stuff out and you're going to hire people who are more knowledgeable about drafting? I, I saw, saw someone in the comments was like, Schmitz has gotten one draft pick right in his life and he gets a for an <laughs> position. Like, I didn't say that. I did not say that. That's so cool. <laughs> that, but someone else in the chat said that. It's just fascinating because, you know, you, you've got the situation with Dame and then a lot of guards that are available at that seven spot. I don't know if there's anyone that I want at four. I would want mm -hmm. someone at three, right? I want Paolo. Mm -hmm. I've been very clear about Paolo since the last time mm -hmm. Mr. Sure. on the on the on, on the phone when we were at BetMGM, right? When mm -hmm. my yeah. background was bit much better. That was phenomenal, um, by the way. Thank you, thank you. I, I found a new uh, hair curling technique. So um, <laughs> another story for another day. Um, <laughs> When you grow up playing basketball, these are not things you're thinking of. Oh, it's right? totally not things that I, I, had rows. I had rows. I had like <laughs> slick back, like the whole thing. So ponytail, lots of ponytails. Yeah, I'll tell you this. Like I've I've known Mike forever. Um, you know, because I came up in like the true hoop world, and uh, you know, so I've spent plenty of time with him. He's been on my podcast many, many times talking draft. And then what I've seen from him over the last you know five or six years, how he's turned himself into not just like an expert, but the definitive expert on the NBA draft. It, to me, it's just remarkable. He was always the film guy. Uh, he's a really good guy. He knows he's been to every gym in the world and he's scouted every guy and he sat down with them. He's worked through play sets and everything else. I think he's going to bring a wealth of knowledge to that. And he's, he's very young. He's going to bring a wealth of knowledge to that, uh, that team. Because he, he just knows he's sat down. He's been in a gym with every one of these players for the last, you know, I, six, seven, eight years. But, you know, I, I think that even when we look at this year's draft, he will do his analyst stuff in studio, but he's already handed off all of that mock draft stuff. I mean, Gavoni still does a lot of the mock draft stuff and all that. Um, so I wouldn't worry about, like, where they're putting guys and all that. I, I really do believe that it's going to come down to uh, – you know, him being uh, just another voice in the room that can add an expertise that, that you really can't find anywhere else. I mean, there is no one who does what he does in the basketball world right now. Yeah. And fit is so important, right? And, and on top of that, all of the, not to say that everyone has character stuff or that that's like something always looming in the background, but, you know, you want to make sure that you're not stepping on any landmines or any injury landmines like with Greg Oden or, you know, the list, the, there's a litany of Portland stuff that has gone on. Sam Bowie. Right? Yes, yeah, <laughs> Sam Bowie, you know, all that. And so you wonder, okay, like, how does that, what does that mean for our franchise moving forward? I'm super excited considering that Neil Olshay was such a steak and potatoes 1995 mentality of basketball in terms of building a roster who got very uh, lucky with some of the picks that he made and also had – drafts like 2016 where it was if schmitz was there none of those picks would have been made you're not training with the kings to get zach collins no mm. no shot <laughs> right For, like that's forgot not about that one yeah that's crazy that's that's, zach collins yeah people were on yeah, three three first round picks guys three the only year we had any first round picks really and yeah. and they they turned into zach collins and Biggie, what was that kid's name? He was from Purdue. Swanigan? Uh, oh, Caleb Swanigan. Caleb Swanigan. Yeah. Yes. Uh, former Sacramento Kings legend, Caleb Swanigan. So we traded <laughs> you guys for uh, Giles. Um, uh, no, Scal, the BCR. Scal, yes, yeah, Scal. Yeah. So a lot of history here. And none of it seems to ever work out. We are, listen, we are poverty franchises. Also, the situation with Jody Allen looming as well. She needs to get that stuff worked out. That's well, the you, thing. That's do you the think thing. she's going to sell? She has to. That's like Paul Allen. It's in his will. She has uh -huh. 18 months for this to be done. She has to liquidate every single one of his assets, wow. period. Every, and he's got assets all over the world, businesses, estates, wineries, software companies. Like I think that maybe Brian Winhorst had a, an episode maybe like seven, eight months ago where he talked about the, like all these different businesses that she has to figure out how to liquidate and, mm -hmm. and figure out where the money goes while currently owning, you know, Portland. Wow. 
Is this yep. like a Brewster's Million thing? She's got to liquidate it all in order to get like $2 billion. And then, but if she doesn't, she gets nothing. That would be fun. I think he's don't like, I think he's donated it yeah. all to charity. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what she gets out of it, except for like the headache of it all. But, you know, <laughs> who do you, who do you guys think that we'll take at seven? Do you think we'll trade? Do you think we'll trade that pick for like a Jeremy Grant? What do you guys think? Well, in, in my mock draft, Casey's mock draft 1.0, you know, is out there on the, on the Twitter verse, you know, um, I got you guys taking AJ Griffin, AJ Griffin. Not hate that. Duke. Um, I, I, I like, I'm a little concerned about his injury history um, this early in his playing career. Uh, but I, I like him, man. He, he's a great shooter, good size. He's somebody that isn't a great defender right now, but, maybe with the proper coaching and in the right system, he could even be a, a three and D type guy, man. So I think that'd be a good pick for the Blazers. I heard uh, his upsides, like I'm not saying it is, but I've heard his upsides like a Jalen Brown or a, or a Jimmy Butler. That's what somebody has said just mm-hmm. in terms of like, if he can defend and also be able to put the ball on the floor a little bit more, Jalen Brown's having trouble putting the ball on the floor right now, but I, uh, I would like that just because of his length and ability to shoot and stretch the floor. You need, guys that are long and can play and defend multiple positions. His dad played in the NBA and was a good defender as well. I want Benedict Matherin. That's who I want. Mm. Six, six. I think he's still got room to grow. Could turn into like an Ant Edwards sort of like hybrid player. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, like sure. I like him too. Yeah. I, I like Matherin. I, I loved watching him in the tournament. I thought he backpacked his team uh, and, and was just phenomenal a couple of games. And he's young. I mean, he's going to take a little while to grow into it, but he's got a big time personality. He's so incredibly strong for his position. And I think Portland will trade out. I do. Uh, I think that they're going to try to get, like what you said, a Jeremy Grant or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I also think that if they stay there, I mean, I, if I were choosing between Griffin and Matherin, I would take Matherin as well. Griffin. Um, he has like crazy athleticism, but he doesn't know how to use it at all. So I think the Jalen Brown comp is, is okay ex- it on like paper, but in reality, he plays below the rim. He plays a lot like Tyreek Evans below the rim without the handles. And, and so he's a great shooter. He's got a lot of work to do as a defender. Um, and he moves really well without the ball. Uh, but I, you know, there's still something there that I, I'm just not completely sold as high as I am on Matherin. Yeah. But before before we let you get out of here, Trista, um, you know, with all due respect to Miami, it's done. It's finished. The NBA Finals is yeah. and needs to be Warriors Celtics. I know you're rooting for the Celtics in that situation, but what, what do you will bring think you that? What brings you that perspective? Just the gut feeling. Just the gut feeling. That's <laughs> just the gut feeling. But um I and you're not alone, by the way. But uh did you see that tweet where some blue check mark said they switched out Kevin Durant for Wiggins and got back to the finals easily? Sir, baby, don't do that, baby. Don't do that. Don't, don't act like Harrison Barnes and Kevin Durant and Wiggins are like just interchange. Come on, baby. Don't do that. Do you think do you think the uh you think the Celtics have what it takes? to knock down the Warriors in the finals? No, no. Really? I think they do. I, 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 I would pick them to win the finals. I've got them coming out of the East. I, I, bought, I bought that. Uh, I bet that at plus 600. So that was mm. probably like February, right after they started you know, increasing their uh, ability to pass the ball and defend at a high level. So I, I jumped on that. Didn't take them to win it all. I have no money right now on Golden State. We talked about this. But I tell you what's been awesome. A- absolutely seething over Golden State success. Wow. Consistently betting them to just cover the spread and mm-hmm. winning money. And at least that's like a little bit of an assuage of the wounds, right? I'm just going to continue to bet them until Steph retires. <laughs> I'm all in. I'm betting Steph Curry MVP futures now, win total futures. I'm betting Warriors <laughs> to go win the West every mm-hmm. year. Like literally, what as soon as I can get them, I'm taking them because ultimately, if that's what it takes to be wrong, I basically faked myself. <laughs> what is what it is? I said last night, and I was a hundred percent trolling. I was like, you know what? Dallas is done. Dallas is cooked. The Warriors are a dynastic situation. You know, 
Clay and Steph, they were hurt. So these two years were like the Thanos blip where the pandemic killed us all anyway. They put us indoors. Why not? Like, why not the Warriors for the next decade? Like, and nobody's ever come back 3-0 before and certainly not Golden State to do something that historical on that bad side. You tried. Absolutely not. You hoping tried. I could mush it. Hoping, hoping, just wishing. You tried. It turns out I'm an oracle. <laughs> I just pretend if I try to mush them by being an oracle, I'll still end up being right if they do exactly the opposite of what I want them to do. And, and that's why you should always just listen to Trista. Trista, we always love talking to you, man. Damien will be back next week. You know what I'm saying? Ham will be back in here soon enough so we can all reconvene, talk about the draft, and talk about the Celtics beating the Warriors in the NBA Finals. We can talk about all that soon. Awesome. Good stuff. I saw you guys had Dickinson on as well. That's my guy. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, Little JD. Start, yes, start Friday, man. It's always highlighted by you, man. I appreciate you, Tristan. Love you guys. Talk to you guys soon.